Welcome to Middle Fork River Forest Reserve, home of the stars. Normally I'm talking about the ones that are in the sky, but today it's the people on the ground. We always have Le Rec Liberty interviews in our treehouse, but we thought it'd be really special to come on location today to talk with the people that are making a new trend in Illinois happening. You know, I always say, my friends, you got to be aware of the trends. And these are the people that are, are setting the standard here in Illinois. I'm with Lisa Sprinkle, marketing coordinator, Matt Kuntz, site superintendent here at Middle Fork River Forest Preserve. They both work for the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. Lisa's in charge of the branding and made the great logo and everything for the Forest Preserve District here in the new International Dark Sky Park, which we'll get to in a minute. We're also with David Leake. He's the former director of the Starkle Planetarium and also a member of Champaign-Urbana Astronomical Society. Why are we here? Well, these citizens and staff work together to create the first international dark sky park in Illinois, the first and only international dark sky park. I think that effort and initiative was rooted in the Astronomical Society and all the work the club has done to get kids in nature and get kids outside. I remember when I was a kid going out with our own astronomical club with our my dad and a friend of ours in our community and it was really awesome getting to see the stars for the first time through a telescope. So Dave why is it important to you with all the efforts you've done to get kids outside to help them see the night sky? To me it's really it's the same answer of why do we even have parks like this. I mean it's to get back to nature to get out of that little cubicle to get your face out of a phone or away from a computer screen and to get out and just enjoy nature just like this. And we just sort of consider the night sky as an extension of the park. It is a natural area that deserves to be preserved just like any other any other section of the park. Yeah. Now, you guys put in a ton of team effort. It was all the staff that really tried to go after getting this international dark sky park status. Matt, why is that so special? Why do you, why'd you think that effort was worthwhile? Other than the uniqueness of being the first in Illinois, it was more learning the awareness that needs to be thrown out to everybody that even I didn't get. Uh, like you said, growing up in a rural area, I took the dark skies for granted. One thing that I loved about this whole process is that it even made me more aware to where we usually do that with the public to make them more aware. but. We had to start learning this ourselves internally, and that was so fulfilling. Uh, I, I've learned more through the last couple years of this process than uh, I ever imagined. What we're able to do now is educate everyone um, that might have never, ever seen a dark sky in their lives, and we can offer that to them. What about you, Lisa? Why do you think it's been important that the Forest Preserve District do this? I think it's a great way for we like Matt said we've learned about light pollution and how really bad that is for the country and so it's nice to be able to bring that here and really be able to start educating people about the problem that light pollution is because people may think that what they see in Champaign is what the sky looks like and they have no idea that if we change our lighting or how we're doing things that what you see here at Middle Fork is really what is what you're supposed to be seeing. So I think it's been really a good way and an extension of what we can offer and getting people to get out to the preserves at night and to look up and to see what the sky is and really educate them on how to preserve that dark sky. What's different between seeing a dark sky here compared to being in a community like Champaign-Urbana or Chicago? What, what, what are you going to see? About a million stars more. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> a million. Literally. Probably more. Plus wow. or minus, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, incredible. it's it's a wonderful sight. I, I know back in my teaching days, we would take people out into the country with telescopes and you get students from Chicago who are taking classes at Parkland and they would just open the door without even looking through a telescope and and just be in awe because they've wow. never seen anything like that before. In mm -hmm. Chicago, you might see three or four stars 
and that's it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really fulfilling for me to be able to be part of that experience. Uh, in astronomy, of course, you do have there is equipment. So in order to really see things, you can start out with binoculars. But an astronomy club like ours, there are some telescopes, and, and we do like to share. We like to be able to show people things, and I'm fortunate to be a part of a group that really does want to give back to the community and share those views. It seems like the night sky and astronomy and space travel, it's all getting more popular now. Like, there's so many missions that are going to launch to Mars this year. There's um, a couple of different things that are going to land on the moon. Um, it just seems like that's the way that everybody's interested in what's going on. As other conservation districts, forest preserve districts, communities, park districts, etc., that might be listening in, you know, they think this might be something good for us to try and for us to do. What are some steps you took in order to get this designation? Or even what are some steps they can take to make it more possible for their residents to see the night sky? Well, I think the first thing to do is to get on the website of the International Dark Sky Association. It's darksky.org. And they were formed back in 1988 to do just that, preserve these natural areas that we call the sky. And they started the Dark Sky Places program in 2001. And as Matt said, it, it's still pretty rare. As of September of 2019, there are 76 dark sky parks across the globe, and uh, 54 of those in the United States, but only five here in the Great Lakes region, and that includes Middle Fork River Forest Preserve. If you want to do something like this in your area, you got to identify the area first. Um, there are light pollution maps online. You can get into lightpollutionmap.info, hmm. and it's got some of these maps. Identify a place that's dark. You can actually go and measure it. There's actually something called a sky Props, quality I meter. Love this. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's about $130, and it seems very simple. You basically hold this up and press the button, and it gives you a reading of how dark the sky is. Hmm. Can't just do it once. You got to do it over several several months you got to make sure the moon's out of the sky but you need to identify that dark area and are there any programs being run in the dark area and if not can there be and who's in charge of of the area i I know when our astronomy club started this we measured the entire county with one of these sky quality meters and the middle fork river area was really one of the darkest spot in champaign county and then of course we approached the uh champaign county forest preserve and they didn't laugh at us. <laughs> uh, that was, that goes, we did our first program at the parks in 2007, but it took all the way to 2015 to just, you know, a little casual conversation. It kind of picks up, more people hear about it. And uh, we did a presentation in late 2015 to the Citizens Advisory Committee, and they said, hey, let's do it. Uh, get, the application is online, and there's no format really for it, but there are some things you got to include. Uh, the main thing is called a lightscape management plan, and there's several things that actually go into that, from a lighting inventory, a commitment to dark sky lighting, uh, improvements that can be made, uh, a map of the area such as this uh, with lighting zones indicated. All that was done and uh, by the Forest Preserve and their staff and did a great job. And these guys did a great job with changing some of the lights out, yeah, too. Yeah, you did some yeah. infrastructure <laughs> changes here, right, Matt? It's yeah, like David said, we, we went through that... Uh, infrastructure we uh, measured and looked at every light bulb we had in there on the, in the outside of course I found a, a wonderful design for our street lights that perfectly fit the bill for the dark sky association's requirements for lighting and what are those uh, <laughs> it's been a, now that they're in I got to remember now I believe you got to stay under 3,000 Kelvin uh, that's the main that's a pretty important one right there and that's so to do with the color of the light. That's your color part. lighting. Okay. It's basically turning your light down. You you want to make sure now there's a it gets more technical than that. You need shielding and mm-hmm. other specifications. But that's really as simple as it got to where we out here had the good old fashioned globe lights that was just sending light up into space. The ease of finding dark sky uh, retrofits uh, was not so simple in the very beginning. But as we are even doing it, you could see more dark sky lighting was was becoming available. Thankfully, the district fell in love with this idea. We fixed all of our lighting in the district on time and got certified. The next huge component of that is education. 
is you need to be willing and able to educate the public about light pollution and about the changes and all of that through program through public programs through interpretive signage just different ways that you can offer that information to the public and you're talking about making your own website now to market the park as yes, well. Yes, right? we are working on increasing our website, so our visibility, so people can come to the website and see where they can come due to their level of experience with night sky viewing. Um, Middle Fork offers a couple of different areas that they can go. Um, so we will have that on our website. We will have like a clear sky meter so people can look and see if there's clear skies in our area, if they're coming from Chicago or where they're coming from. And also, like, information nice. about at that time of the year, what can they expect to see? Luckily, we have Dr. David Leake that helps us put this, some <laughs> of this information together. <laughs> Glad um, So it will really, um, in the, this first quarter of this year, we're really working on getting our website going so that we can offer that education information to people, too. Excellent. Matt, have you seen any... Any new visitors that have come just because of this designation? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this past summer um, we were designated more than a year ago now, uh, and this past summer, 2019, we really started seeing the crowds coming in for the dark skies. Now I don't have exact numbers. I just know mm -hmm. when you see the the big telescope box sitting out in the middle of a lawn in the campground somewhere, you know we'd see that every weekend and through the week and. And even our revenue numbers increased over 15% wow. uh, without any rate changes. I know that was a part of the Dark Sky certification. And it, it's been a real treat to talk with them. And I, I, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I still, I'll come out to a camper every weekend and, you know, well, where can I go to look at the, uh, at the sky and wherever, mm -hmm. wherever you want. And I'll help them. I'll guide them a little bit as much as I do. But then... I'll ask them, what are you looking for? Do you, just for ideas for future planning of, of the park where we can provide a little more to mm -hmm. them and make things a little more easier. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you all for sharing about the International Dark Sky Park here at Middle Fork River Forest Preserve. We would appreciate it if you would subscribe. My uh, marketing director behind the camera has told me that I have to say that. And also <laughs> at IPRA conference, Lisa and I, We'll be working with Jesse Scheinemann and Mitchell Franzen on a marketing session on Friday at 945 at IPRA conference. We're going to talk about how you can use your phones, camera you may have at your agency to make some short and interactive and fun videos that would be increased engagement with your residents and with your stakeholders. Thanks. Make sure you come out to Middle Fork River Forest Preserve and check out the International Dark Sky Park and check the website. You might even catch... Dave Leak and his crew, the Champaign Urbana Astronomical Society, out here with their telescopes someday. Appreciate it. Have a good one.